once more with gusto. Adam Collins, Michael Vaughan, Crick Buzz Centre Stage on the final day of what's been a fascinating Ashes series. It wasn't really a fascinating final day. Australia were thrashed by 135 runs for a period of time there where Matthew Wade was plundering runs. He made a century for the fourth time in his test career. We thought maybe, just maybe, this could be headingly miracle in reverse, but it wasn't to be. Stuart Broad, excellent up top. The England slow bowlers did it at the end, and it ends up being a fairly true result at 2-2. Yeah, I think so. I mean, England have played better this week. They got that uh, opportunity to bat first, got 294. Day two, they came out and bowled great. Australia didn't bat well enough in the first innings. I think if Australia had got somewhere near 294 and maybe a little lead, we might have been in for a, a different test match. If Australia had caught better, I think we might have been in for a different test match. But, you know, I think England deserve a lot of credit. They're a team that uh, seem to play better when they're criticised. You know, and that's the mindset that Joe has to try and install into the team that doesn't have to be the case. They can't be a team that needs prodding all the time from external sources. They have to be a team that finds that, that inner kind of uh, fight and that inner kind of motivation week in, week out. Because I do believe that they've got enough talent in that dressing room to be a competitive team in all different countries around the world. You know, when you've got Joffrey Archer, Ben Stokes, Joss Butler, uh, Joe Root, the captain, you've got, you know, a real kind of stable of quality. You know, you've got a few players that aren't in the circle at the minute. You've got a bit of experience, a lot of experience in Stuart Broad, Chris Wokes, Jimmy Anderson. There's enough there that England should be able to be a more consistent Test match team. Uh, Australia have impressed me. Um, obviously, they've had a, a bit of a dodgy week this week. Select selection wasn't right. Stark should have played. They should have bowled, uh, batted first. I think Tim Payne will regret that. Um, but overall, I think we've got to celebrate what, what, what it's been as a series for five Test matches. Every single uh, crowd has been amazing. It's mm. been full every day we've arrived. It's been ebbing and flowing. We've not really been sure what's going to happen. We've had the greatest test minutes of all innings of all time from Ben Stokes. We've had Joffrey Archer arriving. We've had Pat Cummins, Hazelwood producing a combination which is going to be ranked with the best of all time in 10 years' time. I have no question about that if they stay fit. And we've had a freaking Steve Smith who's just produced some of the greatest innings that I've ever seen, the, the, the joy of watching him play. I never thought I'd actually say that, that an Englishman, me, an ex-captain, absolutely loves an Australian batsman the way that he plays. He's an absolute artist. It, it, it was telling when he walked off today, out for 23, so 7-7-4 seven, seven, runs in seven hits, averaged 110, scarcely believable numbers, but the first time he's not made a half century, the first time he's not top scored, caught down the leg side, we talked about that leg gully and leg slip and occasionally Root going to it too early, but it paid dividends dividends today Joe, with Stuart Broad's third wicket so again Broad was the man major, making the major breakthroughs but when he walks off the field I don't think anyone including Ben Stokes including Joe Root could believe it. No I mean you go back seven weeks ago at Edgebaston when he walked out um, a chorus of boos he yep. got the most amazing hundred from 122 for eight the way that he manoeuvred the ball into the gaps and created that partnership with Peter Siddle to get them to that competitive first in his toe. I think if Australia lost at Edgebaston they wouldn't have come back in this series. You know, the fact that he got them to that score and then another score in the second innings, the booze around Edgemast, and I think seven weeks later, the appreciation that the England supporters have, have had for Steve Smith because they've realised over the course of particularly the last few weeks that, you know, he's knocked out at Lords and then he arrives back at Old Trafford and produces a double century. I mean, this is a, a, a player of extreme talent, but what I, I really enjoy about Steve Smith is that you go back to when he first started Test Match Cricket in 10-11, he was a number seven leg spinner. Yep. You know, he couldn't bat that well. And we all kind of looked because he was in the team to try and find the next Shane Warne. Have Australia found the leg spin? So it's just proof that he's obviously got a lot of talent, but he works harder than anyone. Virat Kohli works harder than anyone. You know, you look at Joe, Ben Stokes, they work harder than other players. And my message to it, all young players is just, just work hard. You know, go and face loads of balls. Get in the nets, practice, face all the deliveries, try and work out the cues of the bowler. That's what Steve Smith does better than any player in the world. He gets the cue of the bowler earlier than anybody. He sees the field and tries to find the gap. Sounds simple, but it takes a lot of practice. Get in the next practice, try and emulate Steve Smith. He's been a joy to watch. And then you've got Matthew Wade, who arrived here this morning with some pretty punchy headlines about the way he conducted himself in the field yesterday. Under a fair degree of pressure too, it's, I think it's reasonable to assume that had he failed today, his spot would have been under some jeopardy for the start of the Australian summer. But out he comes, makes a lovely 100, 117, and has to fight super hard from about 60 to 100 with Joffre Archer bowling another one of those kind of spells yeah. up in excess of 95 mile an hour. But he guts it out, got over that hump, and he's shown something, hasn't he? Well, he, he played great. He played great at Edge Bassett in the second innings. Uh, he struggled since then. I mean, Stuart Broad's just uh, had most of the left-handers on toast. Yep. Um, you know, it's that, again that mindset, you know, the, the mindset I talk about in English cricket that they need prod and all of a sudden the response like last chance saloon will come out and prove you all wrong. 
Matt Wade had that kind of mentality today that he was trying to prove everyone wrong. He got into the fight with the England team. He's obviously that kind of player that he likes that. He likes the confrontation. Uh, he's playing against Pakistan. You know, that's yeah. what he's done today. He'll start against Pakistan. He's got two centuries in the series. When you think there's only been four centurions, two on either side, Smith, Stokes, Rory Burns and Matthew Wade. He'll certainly get a few games in Australia. Um, you're looking at the Australian ranks, Labashain, Steve Smith, David Warner has to start with a Kookaburra ball on those Aussie wickets to try and find his form. The likes of Harris, um, obviously Travis Head missed out this week, Mitchell Marsh. Uh, there's so many players that have kind of got their question marks over their place in the side. So lots of change, I reckon, for Australia in terms of the, the series against Pakistan and New Zealand. I think there'll be a few personnel changes. Exactly the same for England. When they go to New Zealand, I think England will see possibly a, a couple of changes in the batting lineup because if they want to be a, a, a consistent team, they have to get a better structure in terms of their batting order. They've got to really pick some real specialist test match diehard players that can play in all conditions. And by the time they get to Australia in two and a half years' time, they have to have trained their brains to go on and get 450, 500 because 294, 330, 301 at Old Trafford, uh, it, it's not going to be enough. They've got to work out a batting order and a mindset to make sure that they get the big scores. In terms of one of the contests we saw through the series, David Warner versus Stuart Broad, uh, the latter won that seven out of ten times. No bowler has dismissed a batsman more in a series. There's been a few do seven, but Broad joined them today. A lovely delivery to uh, get rid of Warner, who made 95 runs in 10 innings. You're spot on in far as saying he has to start on those true wickets at home with the Kookaburra ball, but who would have thought that David Warner, coming back so determined to succeed at test level again, great World Cup, nothing wrong with his form in the IPL, would have a series like this, it's bewildering. Well, it's English conditions for you, and if you actually look at his half century, it's probably in the hardest conditions. That yeah. day one at uh, Headingley, the gloomy nature of the clouds, a little bit of mizzle, it was zipping all over the place, and he gets half century. It's just proof again that you know all these players are human beings, and when you lose confidence, it doesn't matter what your record is, it doesn't matter what your numbers are over the course of the last few years, you know, a bowler gets the wool over your eyes that Stuart Broad got over his. It's a very difficult environment because you're seeing the same bowler week in, week out. The wickets are always going to do a bit at the top of the order. You're seeing the same field and that's why Test Cricket is the hardest format because, you know, you can get away with it in one day cricket. You can hide a bit, there's no slips and you can just have a dash and that's your mentality kind of change. In Test Match Cricket at the top of the order, you know, he tried on a couple of occasions to come out and have a dash and it didn't work. And then he's thought, I'll better get into the defensive mode. That didn't work. He got LBW caught behind, caught in the corner. Uh, it's been a difficult series. He's not got a great record in English conditions, but uh, I'm pretty sure he'll find form back on those hard wickets of Australia against the uh, Kookaburra ball. Yeah, different story there. This has been the final day of Crick Buzz Centre Stadium. Adam Collins and Michael Vaughan. Australia have lost the final test match, but they've retained the year, and they lose by 135 runs. The series is squared at two apiece. We'll be back with our final wrap-up of the series, and that'll be the end of the series for us as well. So make sure you tune in for that.